Hey, 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 welcome to episode 205 of the Titan Forge podcast. I'm Dratnos, joined by Tells and Trell as always. And this week, hey, hey, hey. our special guest is Dobby from the guild Naskent. Hello, welcome. Okay. <laughs> Glad to be here. He loves being called Dobby, let me tell you. Yeah. Oh, is that your idea? I, I, have, I have bad news about our patron reading section. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, so for those who don't know, of course, Nascent, Nascent, N- Naskent, however you want to pronounce it, a guild that, uh, Tattles and Trell, you guys have been, Trell, you used to raid, do raid, used to raid with them, is that true? Yeah, yeah. I raided in Nascent for years. Okay, uh, years, yeah. Oh, very recently. Cool. Um, and I think kind of the proximal reason to have, uh, Doby. Now I've psyched myself out because now I'm thinking Dobby. Go. That was it. I was a bit, it. but it's turned into <laughs> what I'm thinking in my head. Uh, was because you wrote this really in-depth post on the uh, on the WoW forums about mythic rating that brings up like a bunch of uh, problems with mythic rating that I think a lot of us can relate to different, at least some of the uh, points in here. So um, it's we were chatting. A little bit before the show even started it was one of those things that we've kind of we've kind of touched on on the show a couple of times but it's it's one of those situations where we don't necessarily know where to start ever whenever we start to talk about like what is problematic about the state of rating currently because i think obviously we all kind of have felt it for a little bit where it's like rating especially this expansion has gotten a little bit worse than it has in the past at least feeling wise and it's just kind of you know getting pen to paper and really writing and articulating out your thoughts as to why it has uh, it, like all the problems that rating necessarily has is actually a very interesting read. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been wanting to write something for a while. Um, I finally got around to it a few weeks ago, but I think I think this season kind of kind of pushed it far enough ahead with like Aug and the the restrictions that came, and I think the kind of insane tuning uh, in the last two bosses of Mirror Shell kind of. Just push it far enough ahead for me that I was like, okay, it's time to write this. Yeah, I think you did a really good job of condensing, you know, all the all the different topics into one page or like one read through rather. Because like like Tells was saying, there's so much to think about and talk about of of to figure out why things have declined a little bit over time. I think you did a, you did a great job of, you know, putting everything into categories and listing it out. Like the tuning problem, the uh the lore problem requiring like a, this specific structure of a raid, I think was for a couple of really good points. Yeah, I guess um, before we dive too much into that specific post, it would be probably worth it for everybody to kind of get an idea of like your background, how, how long you've been a GM um, and like co-raid leader and how you've kind of, uh, I guess you're just, you're kind of history with this game. So when did you start like, I guess playing, and then how did you get into the role that you're in um, now? Well, I started playing when the game came out in November of 2004 when I was a teen. Oh my god! Uh, I was, Hell yeah! Yeah, I was old. Um, <laughs> that was like I was like forsake school and raid. Um, like I think it might have been like early high school, honestly, at this point. So I'm kind of dating myself clearly. But yeah, I mean, the game was sick back then. Um, it was like nothing else. I didn't play EverQuest, but I did play WoW, and yeah, I kind of got addicted to it. And you kind of level up. You you start seeing people wearing epic gear and, and Iron Forge, and back then, act- ep- epics were actually rare, unlike today. So you're like, wow, how do I get that? So I was like, let's start raiding because that's how you get it. And you know, molten core forty man raiding was. It took forever, so I spent like countless nights just farming molten core every single week. Got full bis, and then it kind of just kept scaling up from there. Like, can I can I like take less time to get this gear? Can I progress faster? And so, I think I ended up joining like a. I joined the original Nascent, um, which wasn't a guild that I ran back in BC. And they were like US 16th or something and around there. So really high guild at the time. And they had killed, killed Hydros, pre-nerf, and SSC and like some other accomplishments nobody cares about now. But yeah, and then from there, it's just like kind of kept with it, kept with rating at a, at a high enough level. 
I used to be way more hardcore back then. I'm no longer that hardcore now because of real life responsibilities, having a career. But yeah, and then took a break in MOP and came back in WAD, remade Nascent um, as the Guild Master, and basically grew it from a heroic guild that could barely field 10 people to the mythic rating guild it is today in the top 100. So, so I have a question. How did you guys go from the Mr. Pandaria raid structure to the Warlords of Draenor raid structure? Where MOP was like 10 and 25 players split and then... Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we, the guild was founded in High Mall, so we didn't have to do the transition. We just started fresh at the beginning gotcha. of WAD, so... Yeah, cool. I've, I've known Dobie for years, um, just so everyone knows, like, my connection. I joined Nascent and the, at the very end of BFA, so it's been, what, like, four years? I mean, how long has it been? Four years? Yeah, That's crazy. Like that. um, but I've always had a lot of respect for Dobie because he's he's got to be, like, one of maybe three people that have played this game at a hardcore, you know, hardcore level. At, at our level of play... And our, among our peers since the very beginning of the game and has had a very successful career outside of the game yeah. at the same time. I have a lot of respect for him. I've I've done range GPS, I've tanked, I've healed. Um, so I've done almost every role as well. Yeah, I've uh, also done a lot of different roles over the years yeah. and like also kind of joined a guild and then got into the leadership of it as well. So can relate to a lot of that. Um, haven't been playing for quite as long as you, but pretty close. I started in 2.1, so a lot of, uh, then we got these whippersnappers like Tattles here that started in, you know, Legion or something, Wad. I started in Legion. I started in Wad. <laughs> okay, wow, Tattles is the, the most whippersnapper wild here. Yeah, that's wild. I, I started after his guild was formed. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Um, cool. Okay, well, we've got a couple of, um... There's a couple of little tidbits about 10.2.6 that have been going around, but I think we can just jump in maybe to this post right away. I think we just, I think we just yeah. skip it. I, I just added stuff to the show notes. I didn't know. Yeah, maybe we'll cover them later, Hello. but uh, TLDR on that is who knows when it's coming out or what's going to be in it, and there's maybe been some leaks, and we'll see uh, what those end up, whether those end up being true or whatever. Um, but let's dive into the, the manifesto. Um, so I don't think we're going to like read it all out or anything, but let's just kind of just go bullet point by bullet point and then we can, uh, we can talk about them. So, uh, the first one that you've highlighted here is the pace and structure of raids. Uh, and I guess the, the theory is all of our recent raids have kind of been very similar in that they've been eight to 12 bosses of kind of you know, a sort of predictable difficulty curve, although they often, you know, screw that up in one way, in one direction or the other. Uh, and WoW used to have these tiers where it's like, there are two raids this tier, but they reach only four bosses, or there's three raids this tier, right? And it's like a five, a four, and a two boss raid or something, or, you know, there's like some random Alakir involved that's like part of the tier, even though it's just a one boss raid type thing. Um, I don't know. I, I thought that was an interesting point because it's definitely true, but for me personally, this is like not something that has bothered me, but it is definitely true that we have kind of moved into a pretty, uh, homogenized like raid structure. Uh, and even the mini raids of the past couple expansions have, have kind of gone away, right? Like Crucible of Storms, Trial of Valor, uh, those sorts of experiences have, uh, not been created recently and some people think the 10.2.6 is going to have one of those i don't think it will but uh maybe it will but either way it's been a long time so how do you guys feel about the the seasonal structure just of the game in general like because like i think that with the you know rigidity or homogenization that you called it of like how raids are i, I feel like i feel like a lot of that's actually just come with like the seasonal structure of the game where we're getting you know patches and then the content's kind of set as opposed to what we got in the past yeah, I mean, I think the size of the expected content is is clearly a driver in in how they design the game now. Like, um, I think there's no doubt about that. I I don't like I said in the post. I don't necessarily think it's bad, but it's fundamentally less interesting than it used to be. 
And I'm I'm wondering if like it always has to be that case or um that's just a pattern they've gotten used to and are just following and maybe they need to wake up um like reminder saying they don't always have to do that and it could be that simple. So yeah, I mean it'd be it'd be interesting to see like a two five boss raid come out and see what happens to the world first race. Like mm-hmm. what does that do? Like that'd be kind of exciting. So it's just, is there is there an opportunity to continue exploring that variety in in the structure of the content, or is is this just how it's going to be? I thought you had a good point of like there's there's this formula of boss types too. You know, like there's always a council boss. Like, do you guys even like doing council bosses anymore? I certainly don't. They're no. pretty hit or miss. <laughs> I, I think will... council bosses have been just like have been so rough over the past. Um few few times they've done them like oh man this tier last yeah. tier sepulcher right Pro, uh, what prototype pantheon i don't know it's they they've got a pretty bad batting average on on the that sort of fight in particular i will say though something that they do that's really really homogenous is like damage types in the raid basically everything's a damage check and very few things are actually like skill checks most of the time um obviously tendril probably one of the examples of something that is yeah you know a skill check but in general they almost always go for damage checks for literally any difficulty in the raid and i think that that actually makes the raid harder to be unique whenever everything is just like a damage check because then that also locks in your composition because you have to optimize your comp so heavily with raid buffs and shit like that like we're going to talk about in a little bit yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do feel like it would be weird if there was a tier without a patchwork fight of some kind, right? Like, I'm not just talking yeah. about patchwork fights. Think about Fyrak intermission with the shield. Mm-hmm. That's a damage check while you're having to do the mechanics. Like, yeah. they, they use it. They use it all the time, like that too. Not just a patchwork fight. That, that wasn't yeah. my point. It's like an element of a fight that has patchwork in it, essentially. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want to move on to? Next point, which is farm no longer provides the benefits <laughs> it once did. This is something that resonated with me a lot because yeah, I same. agree. I hate farm. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kind of used to be that yeah. like you'd clear the raid and you'd be like 10 or 15 eye levels below mythic eye level potentially. And then you'd still like the next time you farm the raid, you'd gain a bunch of loot that you wanted. And the next time you farm the raid, you'd gain a bunch more loot that you wanted. And then that loot would make farm easier and more fun. And now you kind of get to yeah. this point where like you kill fire the first time. And then you come back next week and it's like, okay, well, three people are taking a break. Our gear isn't actually better than it was before. Also, people don't want to wipe for, you know, multiple days. Cause we're, you know, we have, we've killed it, but we don't have it like, on lockdown or anything let's just wait let's wait until they nerf it before we even pull it again and then you pull it again the next time and it's it's not like i don't know you never kind of get that feeling of you have the end boss like super on farm and super locked down until way late in the tier for my guild and i would assume for a lot of guilds just never never a feeling you get you kill or you kill fire act once and then you're uh then you're done which i also struggle to find solutions to this because i think that the upgrade system has done a lot of really good stuff but the fact that farm feels harder and less rewarding than it used to is something that i it's just really draining and it's tough as well because even if only like five people in your guild don't like that you know five people in your guild are are sad during farm and like some of them take breaks or they're grumbling or that kind of stuff like that's enough to grief your entire raid by a lot, right? Like that. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, we killed Firak and I remember Vakash dropped and I was like, "Oh, snap. Like that's my best weapon." And I ha- already had a 489 staff from like a mid-tier boss, and I was like, "This is even this is like a 100 DPS upgrade and it's like off the final boss of Mythic." Which is like a 0.1% upgrade. Yeah, and I'm like, that's it. Like, it was the most deflated feeling ever of reward. <laughs> like, I've never felt that way on an end boss. I was like, wow, this is a total buzzkill. Um, you just don't scale anymore. Like, it's, yeah, you've you've hit the end when you've finished Fire Act. That's it. On the other hand, you know, it used to be 
hey, I'm a Mythic Plus player, and I can do a few bosses of Mythic, but I can't do the last boss. Like, I'm missing, you know, a huge upgrade that I'll never be able to get. And that used to... Six that eye levels, even, we, would, we would complain about that a lot, right? Like, that was a, a huge... Um, a huge barrier to being like a key pusher uh, without being a cutting edge mythic raider was that you were just missing like turbo bis stuff from the last bosses that were irreplaceable. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's a solve for this that is, uh, that doesn't have to, you know, grief M plusers or grief uh, people that aren't going to kill fire act ever, but yeah, it's tough. I think uh, some, some guildies had some, an interesting and kind of cheap idea of like, what if you just had a track above myth that mm. you could unlock once you kill Firak and you could go four ranks higher, like on another upgrade track beyond myth. And suddenly you can now scale beyond the expected power of that progression period. And that could just be something super simple, but it kind of goes back to the, the, the root of the problem, which is, high level doesn't scale high enough during farm for it to effectively nerf the farm throughout farm. Yeah. I see. I would be really hesitant to like add 13 more eye levels that, uh, yeah, M pluses couldn't get blow. access to. Yeah. But I do agree that like nerfing during farm should happen. Scripe had a tweet that was like, what if every time you killed a boss, it got like 1% easier the next time you killed it. Um, which I thought was an interesting take on this. Or I remember yeah. as well, like, Back in ICC, there was Hellscream's War Song, if you were, uh, at least that's what it was called if you were Horde, where just like every couple of weeks you would get a 5% like damage, health, and healing amp uh, in the raid. And you could turn it off if you wanted to, but, you know, by the end of that tier, I think it was at 30 or 35% extra damage, health, and, and healing. And so like, you were like 50% stronger effectively when you factor in 35% damage, 35% health, like that was... um those fights were massively nerfed by that existing um, without needing to be like, without needing to wait for them to come in and specifically nerf certain fights. Like just every fight got blanket easier, um, which I think, I think a nerf, an automatic nerf of that size would also probably be better feeling than the specific nerfs to mechanics have felt for guilds that were close to kills on them. I, I know that's something that we talk about, you talk about later in this post, but like this tier, the feeling for a lot of guilds that have killed Tindril is we killed it just after a nerf and like that is unsatisfying, right? Uh, because the nerfs have been necessarily so large to that fight because of the way that the fight works. And, um, I don't know. I, so I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking Hellscream's War Song is a, Maybe a way to make farm better and to make it so that they don't have to do the nerfs in the way they they did them this year. How, how exactly did it work? It was just like every few weeks the the magnitude of Hellscream's War Song would increase, and it was just a buff you got inside the raid, and you could talk to Hellscream and he would turn it off. But otherwise, it was five. It started at five percent increased damage, healing, and health, and then it yeah. went up to ten percent the next couple a couple weeks later, and then fifteen percent. And like that's a uh, lot of power, but it's not overwhelmingly much, right? It's like two or three times as big as a helm enchant uh this tier maybe maybe three or four times as big as the helm enchant was this tier yeah i was gonna say speaking of the helm enchant like that was their this tier is just of nerfing the raid right like there's always something like that but that yeah. thing was so inconsequential it was about I... as consequential as embellishments honestly <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because we kind of had it, I... I mean there was a there was corruption resistance as well i think that was another good way of like that gave you a Archive good amount of, of power each week right uh, yeah, Uldir had Archive of the Titans that got power more powerful each week. That was only for like 10 weeks, but um, I think those sorts of like, give us an automatic nerfing system that is actually going to represent like a 30% throughput increase by the time we're done with farm, and I think that would go a long way towards uh, making farm more fun, even if it wouldn't solve the problem of Vakash dropping from Firak isn't like a huge upgrade for whoever it drops for, because that that's a problem I can't see I can't see fixing without like making the M plus gearing worse. Um, so I think part of that Vakash problem is because of the eye level scaling throughout Mythic. Mm -hmm. You know how remember we used to have flat eye levels across all of Mythic. Now they kind of gradually scale it up. Yeah, I think yeah. that's kind of part of the problem. Um, like I, that's not to say Vakash wouldn't be the same eye levels as the staff still, but um, 
I think that's part of the eye level bloating, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, I think I called out M plus farming here. Like, I don't like this is, I think it's worth calling out the fact that like, like heroic splits, maybe, which I didn't touch on um, here on, on purpose because <laughs> we don't do heroic splits. So, not really a, a problem. It's not relatable at, at all. Yeah. Like, I can't speak too much to that. And I think it's an incredibly difficult problem to solve. But I think, I think M plus reward system probably could use adjustments so that there isn't this massive incentive to do like a hundred keys on the first week. Um, I'm not saying that Blizzard needs to gate my inability to like measure my time commitment to the game, but like there's probably some middle ground that's more reasonable. Would you ever be okay with them removing the loot lockout from Heroic Raid? Or do you think that that's just the exact same problem? Because that would, that would functionally give you the same thing, right? End of Dungeon rewards from Mythic Plus are hero track gear. Yeah, which, so you would just be oh, like a Heroic Raid 20 times yeah. instead of Mythic Plus 20 times? That sounds a lot worse to me. <laughs> it's, it's the same problem, right? Just in yeah. different, different form of content, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to so rat hole on M Plus, yeah. but yeah, I mean, that's definitely yeah. a factor. Um, and I know some people are like, I know Heroic Week has been brought up in, in the Q&A versus Mythic Week. Um, I, I don't want to get off topic too much, but th I don't think that's really a huge factor either. All right, let's Would move you on. Ever, uh, I, I actually, I guess another question. Would you ever be okay with uh, WoW adopting an ultimate style from like Final Fantasy for Raid where you actually don't really get gear from Mythic? And Mythic is, you know, like heroic or hero track gear is like, you know, the end all be all. Then you don't actually get much loot acquisition. The only rewards you get progressing the bosses. Uh, you could you could implement the Garrosh war scream thing where it passively nerfs the rate over time. Um, but in reality, it's more just for the prog in the love of the game. Would you ever be OK with that? Or do you think that that's or do you think it needs to be loot driven? Because it's, like, it's always been loot driven in WoW. Yeah, I mean, I th I think the idea is is reasonable. I'm, I'm not sure Blizzard would add a fifth difficulty, um, literally in the game. And it's sort of what I was getting at below when I referenced Uldor hard modes, which triggered a lot of people apparently. Um, like there being like imagine in Mythic, like if you wanted, a, like Fire Act to be harder and you wanted to flex, like you could do something in the game to just add difficulty, like another mechanic or two. Like, that'd be cool, and then that achievement yeah. would be, like, a feat of strength that goes away or something like that. Um, I guess I wasn't really saying that you add another difficulty. Instead, Mythic doesn't drop gear. Oh, you more... want to get... Oh, that's, an, that's, a, that's a hot take for sure. Um... No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's my opinion. <laughs> I'm just asking. Uh, yeah, I think maybe. I think, I think in the same vein that pushing high keys it should be rewarding and provide some of the best rewards. I think pushing the highest difficulty of raid should also like mm -hmm. i think there should be some incentive and even power associated with that because that's really a hallmark of the game i think it's reasonable i i, I just want i just wanted to bring it up because I, I feel like people always bring it up as like a, a way to kind of fix this but i just wanted to kind of bring it up just to hear your opinion on it yeah for sure not that i believe but again not that i believe <laughs> it's not my take all right let's move on to the tuning problem which uh, is a pretty big section. Uh, and I think a lot of it lands on the nerfing a boss to then be killable for, uh, for future guilds to reach it, right? Uh, this is a point we talked about, or I brought up already, but like, if you're really close to a kill on a boss and then it gets nerfed, like, and you kill it for free after the nerf, um, that is a really rough way to, to get a kill, right? Like the, we do mythic progression rating. Some people do it for gear, but a lot of us do it for that feeling of killing a boss that you've struggled against for a really long time. And a nerf can really rob you of that uh, feeling when you actually do land the kill. So mm -hmm. um, the fact that the tendril and fire act and uh, before then there weren't really any in Abris or vault but you know going back to sepulcher right like jailer anduin halandris um all all were fights where basically like 
you could you could log in one week and a mechanic would be cut in half or more uh, than it was the week before, and that could lead to it being a really unsatisfying kill. Or you could log in and the fight could not be nerfed, and you could just be bashing your head against a brick wall that was that where it felt unkillable, and you know, kind of whichever choice Blizzard makes on whether to nerf it that week or not, there's going to be a guild in in one situation or the other, and a lot of guilds in one situation or the other. So, um. I have a really good example of this from this most recent tier too, where our our guild, Dovianai's guild, got to Mythic Tendril before the nerfs from Race World First even started. So we got to see the boss, you know, as the Race World First guilds killed it as we started progression. And I was playing Havoc Demon Hunter at the time, and so I got to do my whole like make a build just to kill roots kind of thing as the Havoc Demon Hunter, and so I bursted on the roots for like billions of damage or whatever. And then the next day we go back and it's nerfed, and you do like two-thirds of what you did the, the day before. It's just like a really weird disconnected feeling to the raid. Yeah. There's a lot There's a lot um, of nuance to these points that um, I think is worth explaining. Uh, I think I think Max brought up that there's, you know, the frustration only hits like a fair number of guilds or a couple or small number of guilds that are actually progressing on it, but I actually don't agree with that take. Uh, I think there's a lot of guilds who have yet to get to a boss that want to experience the same boss that the, that the top 100 guilds did or the top 20 guilds did. And I think and I think denying guilds an opportunity to kind of measure themselves against some of the best guilds isn't really healthy to fostering mythic rating. And yeah, but with like Tindril like sure three second yeah, I, seeds there, there are, are not a lot of guilds examples. in the world that can do three second seeds yeah. like yeah there are probably 50 tops that can do that yeah. mechanic ever that was just an important growth factor for our guild was like oh it, it, we can do an apples to apple comparison with like bdg or something and and see how well we did on basically the same hard boss and that gives us a, like a really good measure of how we're doing um so in an ideal world, you would have that like a nerf state available for a significantly longer period of time. I, I will say as well, there are so many guilds that have a significant reliance on just hard nerfs to the boss. Yeah. Um, you, you're calling out Tendril. Think about all the guilds that were stuck on Neltharian last year. I mean, there, yeah. there are just like so many guilds that are doing mythic and are, are mythic level guilds but they'll get walled on whatever boss, and they're actually reliant on Blizzard nerfing this boss because this some of these bosses are literally designed for to only be killed by, in Tindril's yep. case, max of 50 guilds. In Eltherian's case, it's only a max of like 300 guilds, and so they're waiting. There are guilds that are literally waiting, the, you know, the however many guilds killed Neltherian. Thousand, maybe. There's 700 guilds that are waiting for it to get nerfed yeah. for them to be able to kill it. Yep. It's not just Tendril. I, I like. I, I. I think it's. I do think it's a difference though. Like, if you look at Tendril, okay, look after. Look after this hot picks on January fifteenth, right? It's like bang, hundred guilds instantly kill the boss, right? Hot picks on February twenty second, bang, hundred guilds instantly kill it. Fire axe, same same story, right? Hot picks on February fifth, bang, right? Like a huge chunk of new, uh, like the slope goes way up. But, I mean, look at Neltharian. Uh, yeah, Echo of Neltharian doesn't really have that. Like the. Okay, look at. Uh, you can barely star. see. Yeah, Zaskarn will have it. Zaskarn's a good one. Zaskarn, <laughs> Zaskarn, look at the first one on Zaskarn, <laughs> where the slope actually goes the other way because they buffed the boss instead of nerfing it. And yeah. then uh, and then here, when they did the second yeah. one, then there's a spike up, yeah. This is less like... I would call this less like difficulty and more a stupid fight, though. Like, just dumb, bad, bad mechanics. Yeah, um, just rather not, than, like, oh. tuning, right? Like... Yeah, that was just not a well-designed yes. fight. Yeah, yeah. bad fight. <laughs> that was a bad fight. But yeah. it, but anyways, I, I think that like there's a there's an overabundance and an over reliance on nerfing fights right now, and Blizzard isn't very good at uh, nerfing bosses up at like appropriate times, right? Where in reality they probably need to be nerfed almost on a weekly basis to make sure that people are okay. But they're never going to do that. They're not committing that much dev time to it. Was it the Holandra's graph? Yeah, this is the Holandra's yeah, graph, right? Like the first Holy nerf shit. more than more than doubled the amount of kills from like over a month to right after that nerf, and then 
you know, there's it's like flat until they do this the next nerf, and then again people are able to start killing it again. It's I don't know. I I think it is a few specific fights where they've really run into this issue rather than it being a systemic problem. And I think it is the fights where the mechanic just does not respond to anything except for being gutted, right? Like tendril seeds, the change of making it so that if you run over one when you already have the debuff doesn't turn it into a new tree. Like that size nerf, you just can't do that in a gradual week by week way, right? Like how how you can't do that, right? Um yeah. Even if there was like a Hell Screams War song, it wouldn't help with that kind of thing wiping you, right? Because it's just such a binary pass fail thing. Uh, and I think that that's something that is sort of a through line between the bosses that have had this problem is that, you know, the way you wipe on Holandris is a bomb explodes. It doesn't matter if you're doing 20% more damage, have 20% more health. Like nothing is going to change the fact that if a bomb mechanic gets screwed up, your raid is wiping. And so you're waiting for Blizzard to nerf the fight such that that happens less often um, in order for a guild that, you know, can't handle that mechanic to actually be able to kill it. And same with Tindril Seeds, uh, Tindril Bombs even as well. A lot of a lot of stuff like that is just extremely binary. And I, I think that's something they could look at. Like, I think that something that Tindril and Firak were missing was mechanics that, like, killed you if you screwed them up by a little bit that they could then nerf to not kill you if you screwed them up by a little bit or gear potentially or hell screams war song something like that uh, could change right like do you guys remember rashok rashok if you got hit by a lava wave in the first few weeks you're gonna die or you were a warlock right like one of those two things was true um and then they kind of they did this nerf that's like oh hey lava waves do 15 percent less damage and also like everybody had a little bit more gear because time had gone on and all of a sudden like if you got hit by a lava wave, you lived at 10% HP, right? And like that sort of going over that line uh, was really big for making that fight more accessible without it feeling like the fight had gotten, you know, fundamentally changed and lowered lowered hugely in difficulty. And I think that's something they should look at doing more of rather than like on Tindril, you know, you don't soak a, a green mushroom, your rate is dead by 20 times their health bar. You get hit by one of the laser beams, you're dead by, you know, two times your health bar. Um, a flare bomb I mean, hits the ground, can... your whole rate is dead. A tree forms, the whole rate is dead, right? Like, none of those have... You're just always dead. Yeah, you know, a dispel gets screwed up, your whole rate is dead yeah. by so much that a health bar doesn't matter. It's all made up. It's just, it just one shot to you. It can be pass-fail, but I think that you're allowed to fail at one time and it not wipe you, and then you fail it a second time, and then, okay, maybe it wipes you. But, like, it, I feel like they just always go... 100 100% HP, 0% HP instead of okay, you messed it up one time. All right, now you have a debuff and if you mess it up again, then we'll wipe you, but there's there's never there's no in between. I I have a wild theory. Um I actually think cuz we had this problem with Tomb of Soap chairs, you remember where like it was just I do remember the how many binary and and remember we got an incredible pullback from binary mechanics after that. Like Blizzard often does this thing where they go too far and then they knee jerk all the way back and then we repeat the cycle, right? But like for binary mechanics specifically, I almost think it's an it's a mechanism to make tuning the fight easier for them because they don't have to worry about what's an appropriate punishment for failing a mechanic that should be hard. And we just make it deadly, and we don't have to tune it, right? And and I think it almost shortcuts the tuning process for them if they can just apply that to like six mechanics on Tindril, and there suddenly you don't have to tune very much besides boss health or root health. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think maybe that shortcut is 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 why we're feeling this binary nature of of pass fail. Um. I, I do. Do you do you guys not agree though that I, I I think that we are way too reliant on Blizzard nerfing fights right now. I think oh, that 100%. a hundred percent. Yeah, major yeah. major problem. I think that's what we should touch on from Dobie's point too. Is that 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 is such a like an uneasy, unpredictable thing because we do re all, all these guilds rely on it. You know, they you expect it at a certain time. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it doesn't happen for another few weeks. Sometimes it's like way off the mark on the nerf, so it's not quite enough. You know. It's yeah, it's it, we're all very reliant on it. It's un, unfortunate. All right, let's move on to the next uh, bullet point in the list here, which is raid composition has become extremely restrictive. 
Um, <laughs> nah, nah, there's this no is way. something we do cover on this podcast quite <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. So uh, I don't think you need to hear at least me, Tettles, and Trell ramble about this again because yeah. we're all certainly on board with uh, raid buffs having a huge, you know, chilling effect on your ability to kind of play with a set of people that, you know, doesn't get griefed by your one demon hunter not showing up on a given day or not wanting to, you know, recruit a second demon hunter because you already have one, those sorts of um, issues. But yeah, I'd love to hear your take on this, Doby. Any, uh, anything specifically that you got on, on raid buffs? I mean, it's mostly what's been said. I, I think this, this, alone has made running a guild annoying um and difficult and volatile like we ran into issues where it's like we only have one druid and he has like five fps and tendril and we have no option to swap him out so he just has to play with five fps and hopefully he doesn't get run over by fire beams which it's a binary mechanic or the 15 other binary mechanics he has to deal with like it doesn't feel good to have no options because we're not allowed to have options right if we had a second druid um like we could run two druids but then you know we still might only have one demon hunter or one monk you know like a misweaver uh you have to run two augs now because you know we needed the utility more than anything like spatial paradox was was really good on the last two i think the damage was fine but i think the utility has been really important Mm -hmm. um it's just like you have four slots left and and then you're supposed to like be equitable with playtime and keep people happy and let them play the game and you just can't achieve that so then you have to drop the roster size and then that comes with more volatility and more scarcity of of resources right uh in terms of can we meet the comp requirements <laughs> like which uh, in a lot of cases like if you're missing mark the wild like you can't prog mythic fire rack like you just can't do it um it, it mark of the wild is significant um so it's just it doesn't feel good. Um, Something think... that's not significant is the monk debuff because you guys killed Mythic Razageth without me while I was off getting engaged. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, thanks Blizzard for making almost everything uh, like some form of elemental damage. Um, but like even the classes you wouldn't expect, like Rogue, like not a lot, not a, a ton of melee damage. <laughs> um, a lot of poison damage, but yeah, I mean, it's just... I think I think again, like Og made this worse, right? Um, Og made a lot of things worse, but it made this worse, especially. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it just doesn't feel good. And this is why guilds are dying because they lose their druid, and they can't sub in another player. They have they must sub in a druid, like or they can't continue progging, or somebody has to reroll in, in an emergency. You know, like it's just this. You're you're playing on a knife's edge a lot of the time and. And a couple, you know, there's been a couple suggestions like, oh, you could remove, you know, you could make mythic flex, right? There's been that suggestion, which there's but there's even still, with, you know, you need yeah. a druid in your raid, like, yeah. yeah. And flex brings its own problems. Like, there's breakpoints with mechanics, like, and it's very hard to tune a challenging experience when you have those inflection points in in the tuning, right? With breakpoints and in, in flex content, so. yeah. I think flex is a terrible idea. I, I do think that they, I've kind of changed my opinion over the last couple of months on this. I think that they need to, I don't think that 20 player is the correct size anymore. I think that they, I don't yeah. think, I don't know how they're supposed to get to 10, but I think they need to get to 10 somehow. I mean, it's bewildering. I, they got rid of scrolls. Like, remember when you could use scrolls and it was like a slightly inferior. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Version. That is, that is insane. That was great. Get rid of those. And it's um, like, well, why'd you get rid of that? Like, now there's no, like, you're just screwed if you don't have your Mark of the Wild, right? I mean, if we went to 10, it would be horrific with the current way that raid buffs work. Like, uh, they, they have to remove raid buffs. I mean, they got rid okay, of them yeah. after WAD. And I think that, I, I, I think that they were smart to get rid of them after WAD. The fact that they brought them back, I, they got to go again. It's, t- it's time to retire them yeah. one more time. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think they're nice in that, like, classes bring different things. Like, there's, if you got rid of them all, it's like, oh, you, you were marching towards homogenization. We hated those days, right? But I think, like, there's some middle ground where if, like, what if two classes provided Mark of, uh, a Mark of the Wild esque buff? We already do it with Lust. Like, several different classes can provide Lust. Why can't a couple yeah. classes provide Mark of the Wild or Fort? 
like not everyone, but a couple, right? And that would at least impart some flexibility and, and remove a lot of the tension here. I had a conversation with Ian at BlizzCon very specifically about raid buffs, and what he said was actually pretty accurate. Like he he stated that the design goal of raid buffs is to make sure that representation of all classes is present, and they do their job. Would you have brought a druid this tier yeah. if not for Mark of the Wild? They do. They do do their job. That's true. I mean, yeah, you, like, you wouldn't have brought the druid. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have brought Dusty to Mythic Tendril if he was in that situation like the squishiest class and five fps you know like when yeah, we had it's... no when we had no raid buffs remember like limit was bringing like five druids and like you know they're, they're class stacking right that, like that's what we would go back to and like i understand where ian's getting but i think there is a, a slightly better middle ground than no raid buffs and raid yeah. buffs only coming from one specific class uh, yeah uh, let's let's start talking about raid size are you okay with the raid size right now or do you think it needs to change um well i wouldn't want it to go bigger <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane Amen. <laughs> uh like i know as was like let's do 40 man no thank yeah, you. As <laughs> one. So not, not that one not that yeah. one <laughs> uh like 25 man i know i saw that id being floated around like maybe but you're kind of prolonging the pro you're kind of sidestepping the problem at that point right so i don't know I yeah, lagging, sorry. No worries. I think that trying to solve the raid buff thing with raid size is not a good way. So, yeah, uh, like they've added five new raid buffs in the past few patches. Adding five new raid spots is is a very a very band aid just... solution that comes with a bunch yeah. of like I mean, extra, five extra people would be a very big ask for a lot of guilds and make things laggier. Yeah. It would change the the space of the mechanics which you know maybe shaking them up that way could be good but i think that going yeah, lower was... also has problems like there's a lot of stuff that you can do mechanically because you've got 20 whole people in there that you know and then we when we look at m plus which is five players obviously that's you know not 10 or something but it's still like really hard to design engaging difficult mechanical mechanics for such a small group size and I think that you do lose some of that as you go from like say twenty to fifteen or twenty to ten. Um, I think that would be something that would that would be lost. I agree, but I think it's nearly impossible for new guilds to form right now, trying to field twenty people. So like, I have a friend group. We're six people. It's reasonable for me to try to fish up four other people to raid in our guild. It's nearly impossible to fish up 14 other people for me to raid in our yeah. guild. And then on top of that, we have to factor in raid composition stuff with like raid buffs and whatnot. Like that's just that's just like never happening. I, I just don't feel like 20 players. I don't know. I don't know how you do it, Doby, like to be perfectly honest. Like if you had to start from the ground up, would it be possible, you think, for you to even find 20 people? Uh, I mean, yeah, you just you have to make compromises to get off the ground. Like you're just going to have to be like, OK, we're we might be missing some buffs for a while and we'll figure that out. Like you just you can't go for optimal off to start like like and that's going to inherently limit you. But that's the reality of it. So I do agree. Mm -hmm. It makes getting off the ground a lot more challenging. All right. Uh, let's move on to. Uh, another point here, which is user interface, which oh, God. is largely also a discussion about like weak auras <laughs> and uh, oh yes, I solving love this mechanics look. that way, big wigs, DBM. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean this is a big. Obviously, this has been a big talking point. I think when Asmongold was reading this, and then when Max was reacting to Asmongold as well, this was an area where a lot of time was spent. Was uh, was the discussion of Big wigs, DBM, yeah, weak auras, and private auras. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this one's this one's weird. Like, uh, we still have big wigs. We've had big wigs. Um, I like. I remember writing a at. Uh, I think it was it was Asgalor in uh, High Jaw. I remember writing the big wigs uh, add on for uh, Asgalor, like a billion years ago like we've had boss timers forever yeah. um and they haven't changed it's the same damn thing for like 20 years <laughs> well 18 years more accurately but 
it's like why isn't this like more kind of embedded in the interface like if this is an expectation for us to like no timings right like why isn't this just kind of afforded to us at this point and not just on the community to to bring forth you that know that's a good point why that aren't they really, in the base yeah. game <laughs> I mean, the, starting from way back then is such a great way to start this out because then you think about how it is in the current tier and how it's gone so far as to changing the way that your third-party add-on interacts with the fight mechanics to make it so you have to make it even more complex to understand what's going on. It's yeah. crazy to me. And that's just like the basics of a fight. It's like, oh, what are the sequence of you know mechanics to should I expect? And And that's just something everyone uses like the vast majority of of anybody who steps into a raid has uh tbm or big wigs so i feel like something that ubiquitous should should certainly be a candidate for inclusion into the base game same, same with weak horrors in my opinion i think that 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 should also be probably included into the base game in some form or fashion yeah and uh, then there's other stuff in here that i talk about like like raid, default raid frames, like they're passable, but like you're not gonna like you're not gonna try and play AUG with them. Like you need you need other stuff to play AUG. Um, like any serious healer needs needs more than what they provide, so they're gonna need weak auras or something that augments them, right? And I know, like I mentioned here, Blizzard is is trying. They they went down the path of making improvements to the base UI, but they have a long way to go when it comes to, like raid frames and player frames and especially um shout out to healers um the the friendly npc nameplates which are atrocious oh yeah oh, true that is oh that is definitely God, a good shit is so bad <laughs> I, for me personally like even augs having to augment their ui as it were um i don't find that to be as bad as the like weak auras big wigs dbm thing where yeah. that's like because like weak auras, it's often the case that all 20 players in a mythic raiding guild will have to install the exact same weak auras because if even one of them doesn't do it, then the whole thing is shot, right? Like if you're trying to do smolder yeah. on and somebody's like, no, I'll just I'll just handle it myself, right? You you 19 people can use the weak aura in the macro. I'll just play the game, right? Like that doesn't work. That's going to wipe yeah. your raid. Um, but it's with a stuff huge, like... It's a huge... Yeah, it's a huge logistical challenge. Yeah. With stuff like augs, though, it's like, eh, no two augs necessarily want their UI to look exactly the same. Like, yeah, augs are probably going to modify their UI in similar ways, and a lot of them will, will have the same idea. And healers, healers will often modify their raid frames pretty similarly to each other. But again, yeah. if you go from one healer stream to another, things look pretty different. And I, I've always felt like that kind of modifying my UI to do whatever I want in terms of, like, displaying my class cooldowns and displaying the information I care about on my raid frames and, and that kind of stuff. I've I've liked that part about WoW compared to other games that, yeah. you know, have, like, restrictive, just same UI for everybody. But the weak auras side where, yeah, it's like... I mean, the amount of fights in the past two tiers as well where we've spent multiple nights during prog and during farm fixing the problem of we wiped and it was because somebody's weak aura is bad and we're not sure who's and we're not sure why and, like, we've got to figure out what the weak aura problem is... Like, that is a really, really nasty thing to have in the game right now. Yeah, it's it's annoying. And even, like, there aren't even good tools to, like, manage it. Like, if you do weak or a check in ERT, it just, it does a name match. But if somebody imported it and then added a two to the end of the weak or name, it doesn't name match. So you can't even do like basic weak aura checks just because of how it functions today. Like, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, and then... The versioning, like, it's just, it's bad. Um, and it's unnecessary. It, I, have a, like, I have a story that goes back to Legion when I started getting into Mythic grading slowly. The first Mythic guild I was ever in, it was like a World 1000 guild. Uh, and I remember hitting my first weak aura boss, which was Maiden in Tumas Sargeras. <laughs> and uh, we oh, had, yeah. we had no weak aura guy in the guild. And that was a huge problem. Like, nobody knew how to do weak auras. We just like imported some random made in weak aura and prayed that it worked, and then of course it didn't work because it was like, you know, it was a very binary mechanic like we have in the in the raid today with a bunch of bosses. Uh, but then the next guild I joined was quite a bit better after that, and like three people know how to do weak auras pretty well, I'd say. 
nothing compared to the the peers I have now, but like enough knowledge to modify them for the bosses, and that was like a huge difference and and the enjoyment of the game. They they need to just I I think that boss design is also heavily to blame for this too. They keep designing fights where you have to be so optimized with every single thing you do, otherwise you're going to wipe. Um, like the fire rack mechanic. Imagine if you didn't actually have to do damage to the boss there. You could probably do that mechanic in voice if you actually don't have to be doing anything except for assigning people where to go and soak. Um, but the fact that you have to really optimize the fact that you're doing damage means that you need the mechanic done instantly. And then the damage check is non-trivial until it got nerfed, but it was non-trivial for a little bit. So you actually had to be able to perform at, at a top level. Where if I, I guess like Mecha Torque or something like that, you were shrunk, you weren't doing damage anyways, 15 people were still hitting the boss. So you could afford the five people who were shrunk or whatever to go and get in the bot and then just kind of talk to one another about what, what color they had to click. It wasn't like that big of a deal. Yeah, and then like, and then like some of the add-ons, I know Relo's talking in the chat uh, about performance of add-ons, but I think some of the add-ons that a lot of people rely on are actually terribly inefficient like voodoo has a combat log parsing which if you turn it off makes a massive difference on tendril versus it being on it's on by default and most people don't realize it um, voodoo has its other problems it's a pretty archaic raid frame add-on at this point but it's just it's just one of many examples of you know add-ons hopefully being better than they are you know and being baseline um and just just a note about combat logs like aug made the combat log a lot worse um i think back I to i think back <laughs> not and i think back to remember you guys remember multi-strike yeah, oh, yeah. it <laughs> oh yeah it, bl it blew out the combat log like insane um and they got rid of it because it you know it was terrible in that respect it, it was it was hard to balance oh. it had a lot of weird interactions um, and it blew out the I combat didn't know log, that's why and, I didn't and it. that makes more sense though. I think Aug is kind of blowing out the combat log a bit too. Um, not necessarily in game, but uh, it it's had effects in game. Like I remember the little mini patch we had this season um, back in December. Uh, you know, somebody from Blizzard messaged me, and they're like, "Yeah, we made improvements to the in-game logging, and it made Tendril more laggy." Because there's a lot of combat mechanics going on in Tendril, and it blows out your in-game combat log, right? And your computer has to process all those, uh, all those uh, on the CPU. So, like, it makes a measurable difference some of their game design decisions, and that has knock-on effects with some of these add-ons that might be inefficient, right? So, yeah. furthers the problem. Yeah, I. I aug the the aug log side of like knowing how the how your damage is actually working and uh, being able to track that has definitely been a a frustrating change and it's weird because like they sort of had it earlier but then it got worse in uh, ten two than it was in ten one the, so they the lost their aug guy yeah. yeah the tinfoil is that the guy who designed aug left and so yeah. then their <laughs> hooks are just permanently broken they can't possibly also, fix them you remember when like hunter started doing randomly like way more damage than they were supposed to because they started scaling pet damage with with yeah. with the attack power because they tried to fix it for aug log hooks and that was like yeah i, I don't know it's uh it's weird and uh, not to dwell on aug too long but like somebody in our guild was like i think it was dusty shout out dusty um he's like why doesn't why doesn't like Evan might work like blessing a summer where like you just get like a percentage of their damage and then that That's would dramatically question. simplify the combat log calculations instead of trying to like siphon off a little bit from every single uh, damage event in the entire combat log being, you know, attributed back to Evan might like they could go way simpler with the implementation and that would dramatically reduce their overhead. Well, you also have to factor in stuff like prescience crit and other garbage. Like, how are you? Oh, how are you supposed yeah. to figure that out? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about legendaries. So, holy shit! <laughs> this section is an interesting one because I feel like I don't know. I I got my fear lap uh, a week ago or something now, and I when it dropped for me, I was like. Uh, this is kind of <laughs> annoying. Now I have to go and 
do all the work to get it and like we're deep enough in the farm that it like it's not going to make me feel particularly good to have it like obviously you know eight percent damage amp like cool that's that's cool but you know it's been so long and then the process of actually getting it is afking in front of super blooms for you know a bunch and doing all this other kind of slightly annoying stuff and pinging people in discord to like log in to help me which uh I don't know. I I found it to be pretty underwhelming. Um, how have you guys felt about, I guess, Fearlath and also Nizuro, the Evoker one? They buffed the axe like six times, right? Yeah. So it's like kind of good. I mean, now. it's good. It is good. It's you know, depending on what spec you're playing, it's you know, eight to twelve percent damage or something of the three specs or the four specs that can use it. Yeah, I mean, there's still some weird things, I think, where if, like, you channel it on a mob that dies, it just eats the it eats it. Yeah, um, but don't do like, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, my thoughts are in the post, but I think, like, meh is my overall reception of them. Like, it, I think the activities to build them were pretty lame. Like, just go grind some world event, like, for eight hours straight or you know you get a couple raid drops which is cool i guess but like you're not doing very much to build it in the end we're wrath and kata legendary school um subjective but uh <laughs> some of them were yeah uh i think i called they out like, a, like they had like a similar model right well i mean not, not always yeah not all of them had a similar model but most of them had similar models ish for acquisition and you know, it, it'll only drop for certain classes. It's, it's similar-ish model as opposed to what we've had in the past. Like, do you think that was a cool system? Because it feels like people always talk about the old ones like they're sick or something. Yeah, I mean, roast into glasses for sure. Uh, I think I think some of the acquisition methods have been done before. Um, and some of them at the time in the past were successful or at least perceived as successful. And I think, I think that has... I think the perspective on that varies differently depending on the era of the game. Um, I think Max put this well, but essentially gamers these days are very entitled. So the expectation is that most people are going to get these. So yeah. if that's the expectation that, that by default changes the acquisition method, which kind of restricts your, your ability to, to design something that is inherently rare like actually rare, right? And that few people are meant to have. It's just not going to happen. So that's how you end up with systems like Firelath, um, where everyone's ultimately going to get it. 15 kills or whatever on Heroic, I think, was the number. Um, and Asmin calls them welfare legendaries. Like It's probably accurate because uh, <laughs> everyone is expected to get it. You know, I'm, I'm in the camp, and maybe it's a small camp these days where it shouldn't be expected for everyone to get it. Um, and it should be hard to build. And and there are ways to make that feel better throughout Prague. Like, there's another thread in, in this community council, which I highly encourage people to read about the acquisition of legendaries. But they suggested that you can't finish the legendary until you kill Mythic Fire Rack. It drops Holy the final shit. item. It drops the <laughs> final item for it. I know M pluses would be screaming over this for sure. But, you know, maybe there's a an adjacent item you could get from M plus that wouldn't also enable it. Who knows? But I think yeah, it's it's a matter of what Blizzard's design intent here is. And I think the design intent is for broad access to the legendary. I mean I think if broad access is their for design sure. intent that they have to restructure the acquisition process because I don't think the acquisition process is very good for broad access right well, now. Yeah, like right now they've got a system where basically like yeah everybody who grinds it will get it eventually. But almost everybody who gets the axe gets it after the point where it would have felt good for it to drop for them, right? So we're getting the worst of both worlds right now. Um, I I would definitely I be mean, down to see it revisited, like, fundamentally to avoid that. I had a friend who mains Rep Paladin, and dude, he was just the most depressed motherfucker until he <laughs> got it. And then, and then once he got it, he was, like, normal. It wasn't like he was happy. He yeah. was normal. And that that's kind of like, I feel like the expectation of the players is just like, they're depressed until they until they get it. And then after that, they go back to normal. And you're like, what? <laughs> what are you yeah. doing here? I mean, that's kind of why I put in the balance note. Like, 
I think Rhett like got some buffs and stuff and, and maybe some earlier tuning of some of those melee classes was with the consideration that they get the legendary and get a buff from it. But I don't think you should be tuned around getting it. Like, and I called out the example of Devastation. Devastation was really strong in season two, even without it. And it was obviously kind of, I agree. Kind of, I kind 100% of amazing agree. with it. But like, that's how it should feel. Like you should you should feel fine That's and a good not point. like you're not like you're holding your raid back because you're lacking this critical item that makes your DPS competitive. Um, so you don't you don't feel like you must have it and that you're entitled to have it, right? I mean, just look at the guess... classes that can use the Lego this tier. They all suck. Like how how is that allowed to be a thing? Dude, I'm yeah. down for literally the if you see that you're getting a legendary that tier, I'm down for your class to just be fucking broken. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. so down. Like I don't care. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's one tier, right? Everyone should get a a, a spot in the shot. Yeah, like it, right? I think that they should be tuned completely independent of the legendary. I think that you are a hundred percent spot on with that. All right, uh, and then that's the end of the post. PS rework, Brewmaster, Windwalker, and augmentation. True. Amen. Um, amen. Yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, Monk is should hopefully be at the front of the line for some reworks. Brewmaster, uh, they did that spec dirty. It is used to own back in Mop and Wad days, and I understand it was it was like the go to staple for tanks for so long. But it's like it's not in a good state anymore. It's like, it's like driving a nineteen eighties car that's been yeah, it's been so watered the down. Ground. Poor stagger. Yep, they don't know how to balance it. They need to do something. All right, let's move on to our tip of the week segment. And then we've got, I think, some Q&A to get to before Titles has to depart. So uh, we may skip some other takes on this or push them to uh, to future show or something. Uh, but Dude, my we have a lot week, of Q&A. <laughs> my tip of the week is that there's a decent chance that the Legendary's next patch will be upgradable pretty easily if you already have one. So if you're playing an Evoker, it might be worth going and killing Heroic Sarkarath every week for the next few weeks if you don't already have your Legendary to just start, you know, <laughs> amping up that bad luck protection, get yourself that Legendary, because probably the hard part is actually still going to be dropping the Legendary rather than the Legendary upgrade material, if it's at all like Faded uh, was last expansion. Uh, so that is my, that's my tip. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to go yeah. kill Heroic Sarkarath, Heroic Sarkarath right now. I mean, I it's, can think of nothing less I want to do, actually. Yeah, it's, it's it. really fun and cool. Uh, Trell, what is your tip of the week? Uh, I think we must have mixed up our tips because this sounds like a Dreadnose tip, but <laughs> yeah. uh, this week is Daylight Savings, and if you're <laughs> if you're in a, a country <laughs> that practices it... Wait, isn't there like one area in the U.S. that doesn't practice Daylight Savings? There are Arizona. Few, yeah, there's Arizona. Mountain. That, it's mountain swaps. Range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, so Europe does daylight savings as well, but they do it a couple of weeks later than us. Like, so there, there's a couple of weeks where we shift an hour towards them and then they shift an hour back away from us, which uh, I'll always remember because during Sepulchre, the Sepulchre race to World First was long enough that we went <laughs> oh, over yeah. the first daylight savings change and then the second daylight savings change Holy while we were shit. in Germany, while I was on servers. Travis and I literally had conversations for days about daylight savings and when we were supposed to start raiding and like yeah. when daylight savings was over. It was yeah. like a they need to delete insane. daylight savings. Amen. Amen. True. Yeah. Amen. It's Holy pointless. shit. Preach. Put that in, put that in your post, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. U US government, please read. PSS <laughs> in daylight savings. All right, Toby, what is your tip of the week? Uh my tip of the week is to use wowaudit.com to run your guild. Um, I think I think a lot of guilds already do this, but if you don't, you should. Um, it has built in uh, what raid bot support for wish lists, so you can just upload all your sims for all your gear, and then your your officers can look at it and see what who needs what for what fights. And then they have an, a sweet uh, Excel tracking sheet that just monitors everything the team's doing, how many keys they do, what their eye levels are, what their volts are, so you can keep keep a pulse on the team. Uh, it's only like a few bucks like to get like silver tier and then yeah like it's costs almost nothing and will save you a ton of time running your yeah, team that's a, so it's a nice site i think all of us probably have used it a million times i i have it bookmarked in my massive nascent folder of links where i go to it every few days during the first week of every tier and just look at the number of m plus dungeons i've done and then kind of cringe at 
my uh, <laughs> lack of a life. I personally yeah. loved it for the rap feature where you could track the rest of your guild's AP gained back in like Legion, and then you could like get on their ass if they weren't yeah. doing their job. You could also shame people for running 100 keys the first week of Raid. Um, I feel like you only shame people who didn't run 100 keys yeah. the first week of Raid, actually. <laughs> no, we got to sh shout out to Pika uh, that did generate. All right, uh, Tettles, what is in your clip of the week? Oh, okay, so this has been hotfixed since, since this clip has happened. But apparently, the fire in the, in the courtyard of Waycrest Manor could kill hounds that ran around the area. <laughs> then, if the hounds died, they could potentially spawn a Spiteful. Not only do you miscount, but they could potentially spawn a Spiteful that would immediately fixate a player and pull every single trash mob in the courtyard to you. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. Love this has that. been around since BFA. Yeah. And I, I remember going into the courtyard and there'd be like a, a pool of sanguine. And I was like, what? But yeah. uh, the spiteful thing is funny that it finally got it fixed. That's really good. What a, I, I can't imagine. Dude, you lose count too. Like, it would just be so tilting if this is why you wiped. All right. Uh, we've got some questions to get to, which we'll get through as many as we can. But first, we get to thank our supporters over on the Patreon, including. If we give Doby our socks, will he be a free elf? Poxic Tositivity is listing your key 10 levels lower than it is and carrying a pug to big loot. Still no Lego, still sad. I still believe Bad Luck Protection is a placebo. Never nude, jaw, king of skills, chromed, trekky, chewy. So I was queuing into this plus 10. Turned out to be a plus 20 when the key starts. Uh, it's just so Poxic, I will call it positivity this okay, is one of those so, bits that's been going on in the, our discord huh this is the, the lore be. on this is the during the mimosas and mythic plus they uh didn't have enough people for a group and so they listed a key as like an 11 or something like that and whenever somebody queued up they just gave them a, a 20 that's <laughs> i feel like that would be really cool. discombobulating to like be expecting the key to be plus 11 and then just the 21 starts um but hey, I mean, if they time it all good, probably. I'm sure that yep, I hopefully the person is happy with it. Salty Sandy, Shout out the vault. ZivXX, Necris, Tankdil, uh, Nebuk, Eevee, Year of the Spear is extended into 2023. Bless up. No trick. I forgot I was subbed here. Dimat, Rework, Mistweaver, Nyx, Delete Gaming, Master of Fear, Alath, the Dream Render, Gallic, Brusiv, Dratner, Shots, Abyss. Nah, I'd deplete. M Sanity, Xena, Rogue is not good enough for Prague, but still bad enough to be sat for SLG. Bless up. Red color, youtube.com slash workbringer, alphabet soup, druid friends of nevermore, number one simski for Trelski. Billy finally got a legendary on his alt. We all know Mog is the real end game. Warrior rework when, Sife, Pone, Windwalker Monk steal with nerfs by rolling with the punches. Thesaurus.com is a powerful tool. The Marsh Hare. My raid buff is my great personality and good looks. I play Ellie Shaman. Thank you for listening to the Titanforce <laughs> podcast. It's brought to you by Daddy Draddy, Grampy Trelski, and the Tettles Effect. Big Head Small Brain, King's Honor Fellow Horde. It's me, your newest guild member, Juniper. Tettle spreading misinformation on the in internet again. Jato and Honeychunk forever. Shauncee, that moment your tank says, now where's my ranged at during Jade Serpent Dragon Boss and bricks your key. Feral Druids in the MDI, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, you don't have that yet? Mm Boom. Doby never meant to kill. Doby only meant to maim or seriously injure. The small mammal <laughs> living in Dratnos' shirt. <laughs> Sapphire. Is Tindril the hardest penultimate boss of all time? Definitely the most annoying, right? Yes. Nope. Yes, the hardest. Stone Legion Generals. Maybe the hardest, but not the most annoying. Fallen Avatar. Not the most annoying. Yeah, Fallen Avatar. I think we, yeah, have talked about this. Because I think this is the same name. I think, Tendril, I think Tendril's harder. I think Fallen Avatar, we were just worse. Yeah, I do think that's fair. Like, But adjusted yeah. for inflation, uh, certainly Fallen Avatar was harder. <laughs> you would get it. You would get a weak or for Fallen Avatar today. Back yeah. then, we only had a we only had the list. We had the yeah. we had the Neltharian list for Fallen Avatar back in the day. Want to buy frames on Tindril? I'm losing my raids in Neltharian weak auras. I can definitely believe it's not butter. Rock and stone. Dratnos made me afraid to eat bread. On second thought, let's not go to Old Man. Tis a silly place. Proud new owner of the legendary axe, but it's been over four hours and I'm still bricked up. Should I call my doctor? Francis, BFA listener, first time caller. Can't believe I didn't start literally years ago. Thank you for hundreds of hours of great discourse. Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. All right. We've got 20 minutes to get through as many questions as we can, and then Tettles must depart. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Our first one comes from Vidal, who says, question for the four of you. What is your favorite part of WoW? When they announce a new expansion, what excites you the most? Lore, gameplay, new raid slash tier? Hmm. Yeah, I, for me, I think it's raid. I think it's the race to world first, and it's uh, it's like my own personal raid prog. 
Uh, so what excites me the most about a new expansion? Knowing I'm going to get that. And then if they announce a system that is, sounds exciting, which unfortunately <laughs> the last few expansions, the system announcement parts have been ones where I've just kind of like clenched and been like, is this going to grief my, uh, my ability to enjoy that part of the game? How about you guys? I think, uh, I think for me, it's just like being able to experience the new content with my friends, right? Just doing, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be raid or mythic plus, it's not necessarily about the content itself. For me, it's more about playing with the people and just playing with my friends. I have some friends will, you know, regularly come back to the game on expansion launch and stuff like that. So being able to play with the, those guys as well is always an added advantage. Um, I think it's always just the people for me. I don't think it's anything content wise. For me, it, it used to be the lore, actually, like years and years and years ago. That's how I had started playing <laughs> Legion. I was like, man, that's that's freaking awesome. They brought back Illidan. I remember playing that guy in Warcraft 3 when I was a kid. Um, that's how I got into the game. These days, it's definitely about the experience and the, uh, the well, the experience of playing with my friends and new content, I should say, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Think, I, think, I think lore is a big part of it. Um, and I, I plus one what Trell said. I think lore generally leads to like banger raids and good dungeons and i think when the lore owns like i think in legion it was there's a lot of hype you're, you're like fighting a titan at the end like there's a lot of cool stuff going on in legion um that usually just means sick raids and sick dungeons and that's what i'm all about all right, our next question comes from Theun in Discord that says, do you think the additional eye level jump we had this year had any impact on the difficulty curve or lack thereof? That's a good point, because this year we got the extra 13 eye levels uh, on everything compared to last year, but it feels like that 13 eye level gap just disappeared like instantly because you could just get the either champion or hero gear really quickly from M plus in that first week. I don't know. That's true, yeah. and it was it was compounded because uh, 20s were really easy yeah. relative to most seasons this time around. I don't think it had much of a di uh, much of a difference. Um, I think I think I think they jumped eye levels because they wanted to try and fix some like tuning problems with like HP and yeah. healing or something to that effect. Um, it made all of our farm worthless, so that sucked. Um, we spent like months farming and then it's like, oh, we're jumping an extra 13. So our gear is super useless now. I kind of liked um, that it was no longer like that big of a deal to have mythic last year trinkets because you didn't keep yeah, them for even the first few that's days. That's like, probably that was the nice. other side of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you also you also never had a weird issue where somebody was wearing old tier. Hmm. It does help like automatically prevent that or not automatically, but it makes it less likely that that'll be appealing. It's way somebody. harder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the tier bonuses were strong, though. Um, hmm. And we kept them until we got two slash four piece, depending on your your spec. I know some people's two piece was like a 0% DPS gain um, net diff. So that was lame. But yeah, I don't think it had much of a difference. I, I don't think it did either. I think that if anything, it forced you to farm Mythic Plus harder. Like you yes. were f further incentivized to For do sure. just a jillion dungeons. All right, our next question comes from... Redusia that says, do you think we need a special difficulty plus tier for world first guild players, including achievements and rewards, and this difficulty will never be nerfed? We could zone into world first difficulty if we're up for it, but at least now Mythic Raid will be friendlier to most. Um, or maybe turn on world first difficulty only for a certain boss, like world first Naruto does not have that much impact as compared to world first Firak. I don't. I, I think this is completely a waste of dev time. Yeah, personally. I've heard I this idea they're... a lot, but I can never imagine a guild that would like choose to go in and turn on world first difficulty on Tindril. Not because there wouldn't be some people in the raid that would want to do it, but because there wouldn't be twenty people uh, that would be ever interested in like frogging that. I don't think. I mean, maybe. I guess there are people that do ultimates in Final Fantasy, but um, I think it yeah. would be a pretty unused feature if it was available. Yeah, I get I get the the ten man raiding with the boys sort of like take, but this is Blizzard doesn't want to do this. It's, it's it's hard to design the same raid for ten and twenty five people. That's just so much more work for encounter design and everything that goes into that. I I don't know. I don't think that's. I wouldn't want to go back to this. It, this just seems like a complete waste of dev time. Like they surely we can do something better. Yeah, I mean, I I get like I understand the. You know, when we talk about how, like, it's nice to kill pre-nerf bosses, right? Like, 
the idea of immortalizing a pre-nerf boss is something you could go and do, right? Or something like Herald of the Titans is something you could go back and do is appealing for that reason. I just, I do think it would have very low buy-in. Um, so, I mean, if it was like very easy in terms of dev time, I'd be down, but I don't, I don't, I, I suspect this would be the kind of thing that wouldn't be uh, worth that. All right, next question comes from Toik in Discord that says, is it time to bring back the 10 to 25, like the 10 or 25, like having both of those, raid format to World of Warcraft? I find it hard to believe during the first 10 years of WoW, the raiding formula was changed with every expansion, but the current raid formula has been deemed perfect without any tweaks for the next 10 years. A common argument I've encountered is they can create better bosses due to the single raid side. However, the 10 to 25 formula had its fair share of epic bosses, such as Lei Shen, Siegecrafter, and Ragnaros. I just realized I answered this one on the last one. Whoops. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. all. I'll, I'll what I it. what I just said on the last one. Uh, just to go back to the other one because I didn't actually answer what they asked. Um, I think special difficulty tier. I don't like. It could be cool. I kind of hinted at that with like you could add hard modes into Mythic for like flex, like flex achievements, like feats of strength or some some crazy feats that would give like aspirational cosmetic stuff. Um, I think that'd be cool, but I don't think a full-on difficulty would be the play. Okay, how about ten or twelve? Oh, yeah, I guess you already yeah you already answered ten or twenty-five uh, format. Yeah. I guess Tettles, you've already said you want to see ten as like the mythic number. What do you think about ten or twenty-five? Because the thing with ten or twenty-five I... was that they weren't actually ever the same difficulty. Like usually ten was no. easier, except for a couple bosses. I... I think I think they did the correct approach whenever they consolidated it down to one one difficulty. I think that that is the correct approach because then it allows them to balance the game just significantly easier, um, especially with players' expectations. Players' expectations have shifted over time drastically. Where uh, in the past, it, I guess it, I don't want to say it was okay, but people were more willing for it to be okay whenever the game was just like really imbalanced between tw between ten and 10, 25 player, but they would not be okay with that today. All right, uh, next question coming up. Another Twitter question here that says, uh, this is from Azil, that says, Incandescent Essence Helm Enchant failed as a nerf over time mechanic in Amirdasil. This kind of item done yes. correctly would still give the big boys their race, but would also give, make Mythic rating more accessible for the rest of us gamer mums and dads with less time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, only like 14 guilds in the world killed without Helm Enchant, so almost everybody that's killed Virac has done it with a with the Helm Enchant, but yeah, it was like 2% throughput or something, right? So, uh, pretty small. I mean, we talked about it earlier, but yeah, it was, it was a very uh, anemic automatic nerf mechanic when compared to stuff like Corruption Resistance or Archive of the Titans or Hellscream's Warsong, any of those mechanics up in that mold in the past. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm just confused on the intent here by Blizzard. Yeah, like did they just forget about it and forget to buff it? Because like it's it's giving me embellishment vibes, you know? Like it's so minuscule. Like it seems like a like a loss opportunity for them this year. All right, next question comes from Rune in Discord that says, "Why is there not more Discord discourse around recruitment tools?" Every guild I've been a part of in the last three years, this has been a massive issue where the tediousness of recruiting eventually catches up, especially in a world with like 10 spec requirements. I, I think that the reason that there's not more discourse from us is because the way we recruit is we ask our friends if they want to join our guild. Very rarely do we have to go through recruitment tools, right? Almost everybody who either applies to our guild or joins our guild is vouched for by a player that's already in the guild in some capacity. Or if they're occasionally you get complete randoms occasionally but that is in incredibly rare that you'll get somebody who has no affiliation with the guild whatsoever so we, yeah, we don't think... really relate uh there's a lot of like you know medium medium level guilds that this resonates with heavily though i think Dobie, how are you i mean obviously you're like gm I yeah what do you think is something that's more touches you because like for me recruitment has definitely it's definitely something where it's hard to strike a balance between getting people that are getting a lot of interest and then getting interest from the right kinds of players when you're looking for for new applicants i mean for a number of years we we were a no-name guild like every other like mid-tier guild like no real like quote-unquote fame associated with us we aren't like um well known uh so in in those days 
like while Prague was really the, the the dominant tool and you you had to go on the offensive. You had to go look for people who would mark themselves and it was very laborious. You know, I even wrote bot scripts to do this automatically for us uh, at one point to just make it easier. And I like I agree with this. I don't think this has evolved very much. I know there's tools like Guilds of WoW that are trying to do it better. I think Raider IO has made attempts, but Raider IO's tools pretty lackluster, honestly, and doesn't get much use by serious players. So I think the usage is kind of cratered that tool on their website. And WoW Prog's dying. Like, it's been dying, and that doesn't leave many options for guilds to do recruitment. So I agree, yeah, this is a big issue. Uh, the in-game tools, by the way, are atrocious. Yeah. Like, for, oh, yeah. The in-game guild finder is is frankly horrible. Like, I, I like what are you supposed to do if you're looking for a heroic level guild? Like, well, like, are you supposed to look in LFG whenever the, you see yeah. you see a group that says heroic guild run, and you sign up to that, and you're like, oh my god, this is my new guild. Yeah, what, I, what I think we, Warcraft Logs does some stuff too, but it's it's so that feature is so buried on their site. I just think there's a big opportunity here for whatever site wants to run with this and leverage the their traffic. Tools. Yeah, uh, they got to fix the in-game tools too. They are so bad. <laughs> yeah. We actually talked about this quite a bit, like uh, I think two months ago on a show, and I didn't even know at the time, but people left in the comments and in our Discord after that there's like a really big recruitment Discord that I, I think a lot of the like world 300 to 1,000 guilds use quite a bit, and they pick up people or trials or whatever. And at least it's like a it's a bigger market with more chances to communicate with guilds there. There might be more sources like that that have come up these days that we don't know about because our guilds, you know, are established and we have people apply to our guilds' websites outside of the tools quite a bit, like we said. All right. Our final question for the day comes from Raychu in Discord that says, how should Blizzard go about balancing the needs of the Race to World First with cutting edge and lower Hall of Fame Raiders? The Race to World First has grown to the point that more people will only ever experience Mythic through the race than actually play it themselves. I think you can tell Blizzard takes this seriously when you look at bosses like Tindril and Thyrak. Uh, personally, I think raid buffs are also a consequence of wanting all 13 class colors on the Race to World First stream for fans to relate to their class's player. Oh. I think that that is likely uh, something that, that that's likely a, a astute observation at, at the end there. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, I do think that bosses, end bosses being designed to be challenging for race to world first raiders and then for, like, the guilds in the world that aren't in the race to world first but are kind of close and are, like, really sick and, um, you know, the, like, the FSYs and the instant dollars out there to be able to actually also, like, get to fight bosses like pre-nerf tendril, pre-nerf firak um, is really cool. And the fact that, you know, millions of people get to watch that as well each tier, I think is also really cool. Um, it's just tough because, like, you know, if a few months later the fact that those bosses were that hard for that crowd is, like, still there for, you know, a world 350 guild that's, you know, just pulling a tendril that they will never be able to kill... Um, that is a tremendous problem. So I think it probably involves either a quick and high magnitude automatic nerfing system in any given tier or a, yeah. you know, a series of frequent nerfs to those bosses starting, you know, <clears throat> not long after the world first kills are uh, delivered to them. I mean, I think I think the state of the raid is um, it's it's a symptom of deeper problems at this point. Um, I, I don't like to talk about splits much, but if if you pretended splits didn't exist and you couldn't do splits and you could only gear, you could clear heroic once a week and then you go into mythic, you wouldn't have to tune Mythic the way it's being tuned today for the world first raiders. You could just tune it once for everyone, and they would just clear it faster, probably, because they're more mechanically adept um, players, and you wouldn't have this problem. So I'm not saying like fixing splits is necessarily the answer, but it is a significant part of why we have such egregious tuning in the latter half of Mythic, and that's because of the gearing blitz. 
and that's related to the M plus farming too. It's it's all related and it's all a symptom. All right, we are closing in on uh, on the end time for this particular episode. Before we go, though, uh, are, is there any places you want to shout out? Anything you know? I, I guess uh, any Twitters or Twitches or YouTubes or uh, people, any anything like that that you'd like people to know about before we uh, before we head out. Uh, I mean, shout out to my guildies sticking it through farm when farm has less value than ever. Um, appreciate the team for doing that. We're trying to make gold to make it worthwhile, but um, Blizzard isn't making it easy on us. And um, we're recruiting like we need we need a healer or a strong range DPS. So if you fit that bill, check us out. We'd love to hear from you. What was our world uh, rank this year, W? 60 something? No, not that. I was in, I think it was ninety. Oh, I got that. I was yeah. upside down six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're close. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we float in the ninety to hundred range usually. Pretty good. That's good for how much you guys read. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. All right, well, uh, thank you very much for for coming on to talk with yeah, us about the all this. It was really a uh, really interesting discussion, and we will be back next week with another one. Later, gamers. Goodbye.